What if Earth's seas and lands were fused into a single, colossal metropolis? A place where the bustling streets of London or Shanghai effortlessly extended across the Atlantic, the Pacific, and every continent. Is such a vision pure fantasy or a possibility rooted in the distant future? In this documentary, we will unravel the scientific mysteries and the real research behind them of a planet entirely covered in city. From NASA's satellite data on sea level rise to studies in journals like Nature and Science, experts have long debated the limits of urban expansion. Today we'll journey through the evidence, the speculation, and the cutting-edge theories that might allow humanity to build one continuous city stretching over every ocean and landmass. Our quest is as much about discovering what's possible as it is about understanding what we risk by attempting the unimaginable. Strap in and get ready to explore a world-transformed, a planet-wide megacity that challenges everything we know about civilization, ecology, and the delicate balance of Earth's systems. To understand how we arrived at this concept, let's step back in time. In the mid-20th century, famed urban planner Konstantinos Doxiadis introduced the term ecumenopolis, describing a future in which urban sprawl unites into one continuous civilization. Yet even Doxiadis didn't quite imagine covering the seas. Our modern data-driven perspective, thanks to satellites launched by NASA, the European Space Agency, ESA, and other organizations, reveals precisely how vast our oceans are. Over 70% of Earth's surface is water, housing intricate ecosystems that generate much of the planet's oxygen, regulate climate, and harbor an astonishing array of life. So, how could we even contemplate constructing a metropolis across the oceans? A number of research initiatives already look at the possibility of building on water. The seasteading movement, for instance, has tested floating platforms and artificial islands. Meanwhile, energy companies have honed the technology behind offshore oil rigs, structures engineered to withstand hurricanes, waves, and shifting undersea terrain. If we combine these insights with new materials research, like graphene composites and carbon nanotubes, we begin to glimpse how massive city-scale floating platforms might be possible. Still, there's a mystery at the heart of this idea. What drives humanity to push urban boundaries so far? Is it sheer population growth or a fascination with controlling every surface of the planet? Scientists point to both social and technological trends, rapid urbanization, rising coastal populations, and advanced construction techniques. Yet each possible motivation leads us deeper into the unknown, where speculation merges with real-world data to paint a picture of a city Earth. To build across Earth's seas, we must grapple with some of the most challenging environments on the planet. Hurricane Alley in the North Atlantic, the swirling typhoons of the Western Pacific, polar ice in the Arctic and Antarctic regions. Each location poses a distinct engineering riddle, Studies in marine architecture suggest modular platforms could be deployed in sections, then linked to form a stable, colossal surface. Engineers at institutions like MIT have explored tensegrity structures, networks of rods and cables that distribute stresses efficiently. If scaled up, these could help mitigate wave impact. The question is how to maintain stability in areas prone to violent storms or seasonal ice cover. A 2015 NASA-funded study on inflatable habitats for space colonization even provided insights into flexible structures that can handle extreme conditions, though it's a massive leap from an inflatable habitat to an Earth-enveloping platform. For shallow seas, building on pillars or undersea columns might work, especially in regions where the seabed is solid enough to support large-scale foundations and ensure feasibility. But the open ocean can be thousands of meters deep. Do we anchor city blocks to the seabed or allow them to float freely, adjusting to tides and currents like gargantuan ships? Modern drilling rigs, which can operate in over 3,000 meters of water, offer a clue, but scaling this to city-sized structures introduces complexities we've never tackled. Researchers have long pursued high-strength, lightweight materials, Graphene, carbon fiber composites, and advanced alloys all show promise. According to a 2018 paper in Science Advances, graphene sheets can theoretically support enormous loads if fabricated at scale without defects. 
but large-scale manufacturing remains elusive. The tension between feasibility and possibility underscores our central mystery. Can future breakthroughs in materials science keep pace with humanity's ambitions? If we cover Earth's oceans, we lose direct sunlight beneath the platforms. This triggers profound scientific questions about marine ecosystems. NASA's Earth Observing System has repeatedly highlighted the importance of phytoplankton, which flourish where sunlight meets the water's surface. These tiny organisms drive nearly half of Earth's photosynthetic activity, forming the base of the marine food web and playing a pivotal role in carbon sequestration. What happens when sunlight can no longer penetrate the waves? Many experts warn that blocking sunlight at the ocean surface could lead to the collapse of phytoplankton communities. In turn, fish populations, marine mammals, and entire food chains could crash. Some scientists imagine installing translucent sections or advanced fiber optic systems to funnel sunlight beneath the city. But that would demand a delicate balance. We'd need enough light penetration to sustain marine life at a global scale. Meanwhile, terrestrial wildlife would also face daunting challenges if urban expansion blankets every landmass. Species that rely on uninterrupted habitats or seasonal migrations could find their ranges severely fragmented, disrupting breeding cycles and food sources. The removal of forests, grasslands, and other vital ecosystems might push countless flora and fauna to the brink, weakening the intricate web of life that underpins our planet's biodiversity. Additionally, we'd love to hear your perspective on these large-scale interventions. Share your thoughts in the comments below. Do you see these controlled environments as a bold step for humanity or a recipe for ecological disaster? If the planet is one urban sprawl, farmland becomes a relic of the past. Where do billions, possibly trillions of people get their food? Researchers worldwide have devoted much effort to vertical farming. Dr. Dixon Despommier at Columbia University championed the concept of skyscraper agriculture, suggesting we can grow food hydroponically in stacked layers. Studies estimate that a single vertical farm occupying a fraction of the space of traditional farmland can yield multiple crop cycles per year with dramatically reduced water use. In a planet-wide city, vertical farming might scale to new heights, literally. Hydroponic towers, each tower dedicated to a specific crop set, grains, vegetables, fruits, medicinal plants. Aquaponic systems, combining fish tanks with hydroponics, recycling waste as fertilizer. Lab-grown proteins, from cultured meat to algae-based protein gels, these alternatives require minimal land area and could be produced within sealed bioreactors. Yet even these solutions run into logistical puzzles. Energy demands for artificial lighting, water recycling, and nutrient transport are immense. According to a 2020 study in Frontiers in Sustainable Food Systems, vertical farms work best when powered by renewable energy and placed near their consumers, minimizing transport costs. On a planet-wide city, everything is near everything else, in theory. But the scale can still be daunting. A city covering Earth would consume unfathomable amounts of electricity. The Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, IPCC, has noted that global energy usage must pivot swiftly to low-carbon sources to avoid the worst effects of climate change. In a world-spanning cityscape, that pivot becomes not just advisable, it becomes existential. We already see roofs outfitted with solar panels. Now imagine every horizontal and vertical surface optimized for solar harvesting. High latitude regions would pose a challenge. Winter darkness might last for months. Some researchers, including those at the National Renewable Energy Laboratory, NREL, focus on innovative methods for storing energy, such as lithium air batteries and hydrogen fuel cells, that can maintain electricity even when sunlight is limited. This approach helps ensure a reliable power supply day and night, addressing one of the biggest challenges of a global scale city. Open oceans house robust wind and wave energy, but if we cover the oceans, do we negate that potential? Maybe not entirely. Sections of the city could be designed to harness wave motion beneath the platforms, converting it into electricity. Wind turbines might be positioned atop spires and ridges engineered to capture high-altitude gusts. NASA's climate models emphasize the significance of waste heat in large urban areas. 
In a planet-spanning city, that heat accumulates on an unprecedented scale. Scientists would need novel cooling systems, possibly radiators extending into space, or large-scale heat exchangers that transfer thermal energy to the deeper ocean layers. Since the early 1990s, NASA's Goddard Institute for Space Studies, GISS, and other institutions have monitored changes in Earth's temperature, ocean currents, and atmospheric composition. A global city modifies all three in ways we can scarcely predict. Rainfall depends on evaporation from ocean surfaces. If those surfaces are blocked, do we lose massive amounts of water vapor? Some theories suggest building evaporation chimneys in designated zones, allowing controlled water vapor release into the atmosphere. A citywide heat island effect might require large-scale albedo modification. Reflective materials, shading systems, or even orbital sunshades have been proposed in academic literature. Without open water, the delicate dance of warm and cold currents that regulate global climate could shift drastically. The Gulf Stream, or Kuroshio Current, might be severely altered, triggering temperature extremes on land. If the entire planet is one city, then where are our borders? Political lines have always been intangible, but we rely on them to regulate trade, governance, and identity. In a city Earth, conflicts may shift from territorial disputes to battles over resources like energy, water, and living space. Some imagine a new global governance model. Others foresee a patchwork of smaller enclaves, each controlling vital infrastructure. Could we maintain wildlife sanctuaries or preserves on a planet with no free surfaces? The implications for wildlife and ecosystems stretch far beyond an engineering puzzle. They demand rethinking our entire relationship with nature. We already experiment with sealed ecosystems like NASA's Biosphere Experiments, as well as facilities such as Biosphere 2 in Arizona and the Eden Project in the UK. These projects provide invaluable insights into maintaining controlled environments that replicate different climatic conditions, from tropical rainforests to Mediterranean biomes. Scaling up, we could design enormous nature domes, each dedicated to simulating specific habitats such as rainforests, savannas, or tundras. Research published in the Journal of Ecological Engineering, 2019, highlights how artificial habitats can preserve plant and insect species at smaller scales, suggesting that with the right technology, some level of biodiversity might persist. However, replicating the complex web of pollinators, soil microbes, and keystone species on a planetary scale remains a daunting task. Underwater domes might preserve coral reefs, whales, and other marine life, potentially mirroring the logic behind large-scale aquariums like the Okinawa Chirami Aquarium in Japan. Even so, fully replicating the complexity of open ocean environments remains daunting. Scientific findings from the Intergovernmental Science Policy Platform on Biodiversity and Ecosystem Services IPES, warn that habitat loss and fragmentation are primary drivers of global species decline and it's unclear whether such domes could mitigate those effects at a planetary scale. Simulating ocean currents, nutrient flows, and migration corridors would require unprecedented coordination of advanced robotics, monitoring systems, and long-term ecological studies. By attempting to preserve nature in fragments, be they domed forests or contained oceans, humanity could inadvertently create new imbalances where certain species thrive while others face extinction. Thus, safeguarding Earth's biodiversity in a future dominated by infrastructure may come down to a careful balance of technology, ethical stewardship, and respect for ecological complexity. High-speed rail lines, subterranean hyperloops, and even aerial tramways might form the circulatory system of a planet-wide city. In theory, the entire globe could be unified by an interconnected network of transit corridors that whisk passengers and cargo between districts at astonishing speeds. Researchers at institutions like the Swiss Federal Institute of Technology, ETH Zurich, have explored vacuum tube transport concepts illustrating how low friction environments could enable near supersonic travel. Yet, designing and maintaining such infrastructure on a planetary scale is fraught with challenges. Geological variations, deep sea segments, and extreme weather patterns would demand specialized materials and constant monitoring. 
As ambitious as it sounds, a globe-spanning network of hyperloops and maglevs reflects our ongoing fascination with pushing mobility to its limits. In a world covered by endless cityscape, seamless movement becomes both a necessity and a testament to humanity's drive to transcend geographical barriers, elevating travel from a mundane chore to a marvel of collaborative ingenuity. From the vantage point of the International Space Station, Earth would glow like a metallic sphere wrapped in countless twinkling grids. Do we then set our sights on other celestial bodies? If we cover our planet entirely, might we attempt the same on the Moon or Mars? Our expedition into a planet-wide megacity leaves us with as many questions as answers. Real-world data from NASA and other agencies offers a glimpse of how humanity might unite land and ocean under one continuous urban fabric. Yet the ecological stakes are colossal. Biodiversity loss, altered climates, and unexpected feedback loops. As we peer into this future, we remember that Earth's natural processes, its oceans, forests, and atmosphere, have shaped our lives since the dawn of civilization. Whether we dare to pave over them all, or instead find a more balanced path forward, remains the grand unknown. For now, we have only our curiosity, our creativity, and the hope that we may preserve the best of our world, even as we dream of building across it all. Yet, the ultimate question remains. Will this vision mark humanity's boldest frontier or a step too far? And how will our choices shape the destiny of our planet? If you found this exploration fascinating, please subscribe and share this video to support our channel. Turn on notifications so you'll be the first to discover new documentaries that probe life's most intriguing what-if questions. And we'd love to hear your ideas. Comment below with the next big scenario you'd like us to explore. And let's keep pushing the boundaries of imagination together.